Welcome to Institute of Quality and Reliability. Hi, this is Heyman. Statistical Tolerance Stackup. In this video, we will discuss how to perform worst case analysis WCA or sometimes referred as extreme value analysis EVA. To perform this, loop diagram is sometimes used. So we will explain this concept of loop diagram briefly. The main purpose of this video is to understand statistical tolerance stack of analysis, which is an optimistic way of designing tolerances. We will explain this concept with an example of tolerance stack up analysis. Tolerances of assembled parts. Most of the design applications require more than one part. For example, pump, transmission, ball bearings, etc. Each part in the assembly has tolerances and manufacturing variation. Capability index CP gives us a ratio of tolerance and Six Sigma variation. Tolerances need not be physical. These can refer to other properties as well. For example, resistance, capacitance, chemical percentage or other properties. Let us understand the concept of worst case analysis WCA or sometimes referred as extreme value analysis. WCA is a pessimistic approach to specify tolerances. However, it is very simple and we will apply WCA to a simple example to provide an illustration. Consider that there are three parts, part A, part B and part C. So the assembly of part A and B is to be fitted in part C. The tolerances of all the three parts are mentioned therein. And these are also shown in the table below. In WCA, a concept of loop diagram is often used. Our convention will be towards left is negative and towards right is positive. So we will start with B that is 10 plus minus 0.1 that is towards left. Then we go to A that is 25 plus minus 0.5 and then we come back to the right surface of C which is 35.25 plus minus 0.1. So we get a minimum gap of 0.2 but which is minus and maximum gap of 0.7 which is plus. Here is an example of more complex WCA. Perform a worst case analysis for the following part to find clearance or interference between holes and pins. The loop diagram will be slightly more complex compared to the previous case. So we start with the radius of the pin on the right side that is A. Then we further move to the left by B which is the center distance between the pins. Then on the left side, the radius of the left side pin. Then D is the radius of the hole. Then E is taking us to the left side face, which is D face. From D face, we move to F, which is the center of the hole on the right side. And finally, G is the radius of the hole. The calculations are shown in the table. And we can see that the minimum value is 0.143 plus and the maximum value is minus 0.043. We could visualize as other way around also. Worst case analysis or WCA is pessimistic and can result in increased manufacturing cost. Comparatively, statistical tolerancing is optimistic and can reduce manufacturing cost. Statistical approach to tolerance stack up uses property of additivity of variances. Standard deviations cannot be added as these are vector quantities, but variances can be added as shown below. Sigma A is the first vector and Sigma B is the second vector perpendicular to Sigma A. So Sigma A plus Sigma B can be a vector addition of the two. Or we can say sigma square A plus B is equal to sigma A square plus sigma B square as these are perpendicular to each other. 
let us see an illustration of addition of variances. For example, consider assembly of four parts as shown in the figure. The mean of the assembly is sum of the means of the four parts that is mu assembly is equal to the sum of the four population means mu1 plus mu2 plus mu3 plus mu4. While as the variance of the assembly will be sigma assembly square is equal to sigma1 square plus sigma2 square plus sigma3 square plus sigma4 square. Let us now see an application example of statistical tolerance stack up. We will consider the previous example. Suppose these two parts should fit in a part with mean 35.25 plus or minus 0.1. How many assemblies are likely to be tight or will not fit? Let us solve this problem with the concept of statistical tolerance stack up to estimate variation in gap G. In statistical tolerancing, we need to understand how to estimate standard deviation of the dimensions. Let us assume that the dimensions are normally distributed. Remember the properties of normal distribution. 99.73% area under normal distribution is included between plus or minus 3 standard deviations or total spread of 6 standard deviations. If the manufacturing process is even marginally capable, tolerance will be equal to 6 standard deviations or better. We will solve the problem with the assumption that tolerance equals 6 standard deviation. If same or similar part is produced earlier, we can use the historical value of the standard deviation of such a part. We will use Microsoft Excel to perform calculations. We now make a table of the dimensions as shown in Microsoft Excel. It shows the values of A, B and C in terms of nominal value and a total tolerance. So the standard deviation of A will be one sixth of the total tolerance of A that is equal to 0.5 divided by 6. And we can copy this formula for B and C as well. This is with the assumption that each tolerance equals 6 standard deviations. Now we can also calculate the nominal values. A plus B will be addition of the nominal values of A and B. So that is equal to 25 plus 10. And the gap will be C minus A plus B. So nominal will be C minus A plus B. And that is equal to 0.25. To calculate standard deviation of A plus B, we will have to add variances of A and B. So we write and take a square root of course. So we write equal to SQRT into bracket standard deviation of A square plus standard deviation of B raised to the power 2. And that gives us a value of 0 0.090 rounded value. We can increase the decimals if we wish. So it will be 0 0.0898. And while we subtracted the value of A plus B from C for nominal value of the gap, for the standard deviation, we still need to add the variances of A plus B and C. So standard deviation of the gap will be equal to SQRT, standard deviation of A plus B square plus standard deviation of c square and that equals 0 0.096. We want to estimate what proportion of assemblies will not fit or will be tight and will require force fit. Assembly will be tight or will not fit if gap is less than zero. As all dimensions are normally distributed, the gap which is a result of stack up of tolerances will also be normally distributed. As such, even if the part dimensions are not perfectly normally distributed, the resulting dimension by stack up will be approximately normally distributed based on central limit theorem. Thus, gap has normal distribution with mean of 0.25 and standard deviation of 0.096 rounded value. 
Therefore, we need to find out area under this normal distribution for gap less than zero as shown in the figure. We will use Microsoft Excel function norm.dist to find this area. Now let us use Excel to estimate the probability of gap less than zero. Remember we have already calculated the standard deviation of gap as 0 0.096. We can increase the decimal by one and see that it's actually 0 0.0957. So the probability of gap less than zero can be shown as the red area on normal distribution and it is given by equal to norm.disk function n o r m so select the dot disk function x is 0 mean is equal to 0.25 comma standard deviation is equal to 0 0.0957 comma and cumulative is 1 because we want the area so 1 or true and that gives us a value of 0 0.0045 maybe we can increase the decimal by 1 or 0 0.004512 so the estimated ppm will be this area that is probability multiplied by 10 raised to 6 so that's equal to 4511 ppm so without actually manufacturing parts we have estimated that the ppm level with these tolerances is likely to be about 4500 this may not be a very precise number but provides a good guidance for our planning at the design level. Let us understand limitations of statistical tolerancing. In real life, each tolerance may not equal to Six Sigma. Each characteristic may not be normally distributed as well. What should we do if the assumptions are not valid? If we do not know anything about the type of variation, we need to use worst case analysis or extreme value analysis. This requires only simple arithmetic without using any statistics and assumptions. If we know something about the distributions, we can also use Monte Carlo simulation. To understand tolerance stack up analysis using Monte Carlo simulation, please watch our video on this subject. Link is provided in the description of this video. Let us do a quick recap. Tolerances are often analyzed using worst case analysis or extreme value analysis which could be pessimistic and can increase manufacturing cost. We have seen how to use loop diagram in analyzing tolerances. We have also explained how standard deviations cannot be added but variances can be added. Standard deviations are vector quantities. We have explained the concept of tolerance stack up analysis with an example in Microsoft Excel. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it worth watching. Please subscribe to Institute of Quality and Reliability channel if you want to watch more videos on reliability engineering, Six Sigma and statistical quality control. Thank you.